again in the last class we had talked about what is sleep what is the biological basis for sleep the various stages for sleep now we will be talking about the various theories related to sleep the disorders and the remedial measures for those disorders now there are three basic theories we'll understand for the sleep the first is the adaptive theory of sleep the next is the restorative theory of sleep and finally the dual process hypothesis now to start with the first theory that is the adaptive theory of sleep this was the first theory among the first theories of sleep that was propounded and this theory was focusing on the concept of evolution so this theory propounded that as we uh, evolve we try to escape ourselves from our predators because we are trying to escape from our predators what we do is we wake up only during that time at the time when the predators are asleep or we try to uh, avoid being present at the times when the predator is on the field so predator usually is considered to be on the field during nights so what this theory propounded was that most of the human uh, most of the animals come out during the daytime just to escape the predators and this is something by evolution that they have learned and next this theory said that the nocturnal animals come out during night but during the day they are high up on the trees and because of that they can escape the predators but this theory was criticized on a major ground stating that if this theory stands true then the predators will find their uh, prey only during the day times so predators should come out during day time and this was the major criticism laid down for this adaptive theory of sleep as a result there was another group of psychologists that worked to promote or to develop another set of theory that explained why we sleep this theory was based on the concept of restoration or the importance of physical health of the body as a result this theory explained we sleep to restore or re-energize our body also during the process of sleep our damaged cells is repaired our damaged cells are repaired so these are the basic reasons why we sleep then he tried to explain when we intake food which is mainly starchy in nature what would happen the tryptophan level would increase as a result serotonin would increase and this increase in serotonin would lead to more drowsiness sleepiness or drowsiness and a person would be tempted to sleep much more uh, by the intake of starchy food the next it say, said that the plasticity of the brain we have talked about this in a uh, class in the lecture on brain so plasticity of brain is also enhanced or increased by sleep as a result the uh, he uh, this set of psychologists tried to explain the importance of sleep and they said sleep is very essential for us to be healthy so these were the basic um, i could say uh, reasons that they propounded for this theory the next came the dual process hypothesis for the sleep this dual process hypothesis for the sleep explained sleep is made up of two components one is the rem sleep and the other is the non rem sleep that we have already talked about in the previous class so you have the rem sleep that's the rapid eye movement and the n rem sleep that is the non rapid eye movement and sleep hormone fluctuates uh, the level and this level is determined in the body 
by various means. So once the hormone level fluctuates, that is one thing to note. The second is eye movement fluctuates and there are other fluctuations as well that affect the process of sleep. To add to the purpose of NREM and REM sleep, this theory propounded that there are two basic reasons. The first is to refresh our brain and to restore our memories back. So if we sleep, uh, you might have heard people saying you must have a good, a sound sleep before the examination. The reason being, it tries to restore your memory. Whatever you have learned or whatever you have read would be restored back into your memory if you have a sound sleep. So it added these two concepts that is refreshing the brain and restoring the memory. The next thing, so these were the three theories that were propounded. The next is the various sleep disorders. Now the first is hypersomnia. Is the increased activity or alertness during sleep. The next is insomnia. Insomnia means the inability to sleep or a person is not able to sleep during the night. Next is narcolepsy. Narcolepsy explains uh, during there is sudden onset of REM uh, during periods of wakefulness. So suddenly a person might have a brief episode of sleep. So that is narcolepsy. The next is circadian rhythm disorders this is commonly seen in people who do shift jobs or uh, are involved in frequent traveling and they have a phenomena of what is known as jet lag as a result there is change in the day night cycle or the sleep wake cycle now these are controlled by giving extra doses of melatonin or melatonin supplements to these people if these cases appear to be severe. So this is circadian rhythm disorder. The next that is very important is neuris, neurinus and that means urination in bed during night. The next is sleep apnea. Sleep apnea implies loss of sleep and uh, I, can, I can say a kind of loss of breathfulness and increased snoring and this is the common cause for SIDS that is uh, also known as the crib de uh, death or sudden infant death syndrome where there is shortening of breathing. Um, it's kind of a uh, child takes over the cloth over his face which leads to uh, shortening of breath. It can be due to frequent awakening cycles of the child and there are other phenomena associated with it. The next is night terrors or we also call it nightmare syndrome. A person sees a, a dangerous dream and wakes up all of the sudden. So that is known as night ter terror or nightmare syndrome. The next is somnambulism. It is also known as sleepwalking. A person wakes up during the sleep and starts walking. Next is restless leg syndrome. A person while sleeping feels that he has to do a lot of work and he feels that his legs are constantly moving which is known as restless leg syndrome. The next is also known as the periodic limb movement disorder. Periodic limb movement disorder. Under periodic limb movement disorder there are small muscle twitches that appear. The next is painful leg cramps. A person has severe leg pain, uh, usually of the calf muscles during night time. And finally is the state of sleep drunkness. 
under this stage of sleep drunkenness uh, if a person is under a very deep sleep and you wake him up he will be uh, kind of disoriented as soon as he wakes up and this is known as a state of sleep drunkenness so these are some of the common sleep disorders that occur but it's not only important to understand the disorders what is very important is as a psychologist you must be very much aware about these sleep disorders and how to provide remedial measures for these disorders so there are various techniques that have been used for these sleep disorders the first is paradoxical intervention it talks about uh, removing the pressure to sleep so if a person is suffering from insomnia or a disease in which he is not able to have a sound sleep a person should not be ever forced to sleep because if the person is forced to sleep uh, there would be kind of interventions and this treatment is known as paradoxical intervention where you try to remove any kind of pressure uh, asking a person to sleep the next is relaxation yoga meditation and uh, reiki are some of the therapies that help person relax especially for the episodes of nightmare disorders insomnia and uh, uh, dreadful disorders during night so dreadful dreams the next is proper exercise it has been uh, researchers have shown exercises prior to 4 to 6 hours of sleep leads to a very light and sound sleep food intake as we have already mentioned starchy food leads to higher drowsiness now based on the kind of disorder a person is suffering from there can be changes in the type of food intake if a person is a uh, kind of insomniatic you can provide person with more of starchy food on the other hand if a person is hypersomniatic you can provide person with less starchy food the next is control the stimulus now if there are certain stimulus that leads to uh, dreadful dreams or night terrors or kind of restless leg syndromes it's best to control those stimulus before the person sleeps the next is sleep restrictions for insomnia specifically so insomnia patient should not be allowed to sleep during day because if they sleep during day they won't be able to have a proper night sleep so there should be kind of sleep restrictions that should be imposed for insomnia patient then as we talked about the circadian rhythm disorders there should be uh, melatonin supplements which are provided to shift workers and Uh, person suffering from severe jet lag -like conditions and finally you have imagery rehearsals imagery rehearsals are mainly for nightmares where a person is kind of uh, before sleeping uh, a person is explained about a situation which is uh, very much interesting so that the person rem remembers that kind of situation and tries to uh, see those in dreams rather than seeing a nightmare or a terrific dream So these are some of the remedial measures that can be used to um, to curb the problems of sleep disorders. We'll be covering the topic of dreams in the next topic. Uh, for any doubts or any queries, you can leave comment below this video, and we'll be more than happy to resolve it. Have a good day ahead.